Okay, hi. We are here with uh, uh, with the next symposium, the current uh, methods and application of big data and phylogenetics. And then it's my pleasure to present the Dr. Dalsuk. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Dalsuk, Frederick Dalsuk. Um, Dr. Dalsuk is a research director at the National Center of scientific research working at the Institute of Evolutionary Science of the campus of the University of Montpellier in France. He's interested in the biological application and methodological aspect of the phylogenomic approach for reconstructing of the tree of life. His various biological models have been mammals and tunicates for which he contributed to resolve many phylogenetic relationships using the work of genomic data available. He has also explored the methodological limitation of phylogenetic inference within the fields of molecular systematics transitioned to the phylogenomic era. He's currently leading the Converge and projects in which they implement an integrative approach to study convergence adaptations to the marmicophagus diet at the morphological, genomic, and microbiome, microbiome levels. His talk is titled Mammal, Mammalian Systematic in the Age of Genomics from Phylogenomics to Speech Delimitation. Again, thank you so much for your talk, Dr. Uh, Dr. Del Souk. And thank you so much for, for, you, for all uh, the presence. And the talk is you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, nice symposium. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully it will work. Yes, looks fine. All right. Yes, it does. OK, so I'm going to be talking about uh, mammalian systematics in the age of uh, genomic uh, tonight. Uh, uh, sh uh, tonight, because it's night here. Uh, um, so uh, I will be speaking. Uh, more specifically about our efforts to get some genomes and to perform phylogenomics and species uh, delineation in uh, carnivores, actually. Uh, first, I will give you a short introduction about uh, the transition from phylogenetic to phylogenomic in, in the field of uh, mammalian systematics. So placental phylogeny is an old phylogenetic uh, problem uh, in which a century of uh, comparative anatomy resulted in very well-defined uh, orders, but the, the relationship between these different orders were basically uh, left unresolved by the morphology and, uh, or at least uh, at best very hypothetical until uh, nuclear genes concatenation entered the game. Uh, with the publication of these three landmark paper at the turn of the, the century showing that uh, there were actually four uh, major placental groups that were uh, completely at odds uh, with uh, the morphological picture since only xenatron was uh, previously identified by the morphological characters showing that there was a lot of uh, morphological convergence uh, in mammalian evolution and as the uh, data sets were keep increasing in terms of uh, uh, taxon sampling and also uh, number of genes that have been concatenated, uh, people quickly, quickly realized that some uh, nodes would be, would be very difficult to resolve as it is uh, indicated here by the red circles in the tree. They are associated with really short branch lengths. And one particular node was the node, the placental root, namely the relationship between Afrotheria, Xenatra, and the rest uh, uh, of the placental mammals. And this node has been the focus of many studies. Uh, first, full genomic studies based on the ENCODE uh, dataset supported uh, rather uh, Afrotheria first, whereas two subsequent uh, 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 studies based on a different data set and even more genes rather support Afrotaria plus uh, Xenatra. So it was quickly uh, evident that uh, there were some uh, methodological uh, issues, but also probably some biological uh, problems uh, underlying this uh, difficult uh, question. And uh, so when people try to assess uh, the support in details for the different uh, hypotheses using some genomic data sets, using different kind of data, nucleo nucleotide codons or amino acids, and different methods. And they show that uh, you can basically, depending on, uh, on uh, which method or um, 
data set you are using, you can get really strong support for any of the three uh, uh, hypotheses. And uh, this is actually uh, uh, resulted in, in shifting opinions uh, in, uh, in the literature uh, with the accumulation of genomic uh, data as illustrated by these three papers, which in which the, uh, the same author analyzed different uh, uh, data set, but increasing taxon sampling and gene uh, sampling and uh, going from supporting, finding evidence for uh, grouping xenotrans and afrotarians to finally concluding that uh, mammalian evolution may not be strictly uh, bifurcating. And actually the decisive evidence for uh, this uh, uh, not bifurcating evolution, at least uh, for the question of the root of placenta mammal, came from the um, study of uh, retroposon insertion by two uh, uh, different groups coming to the same conclusion that uh, you can find almost uh, uh, the same number of uh, diagnostic uh, retroposon insertions in favor of the three uh, different alternatives, showing that uh, on at least uh, strongly suggesting that uh, uh, ancient uh, uh, incomplete lineage sorting, sorry, uh, probably uh, resulted in this uh, mosaic retroposon insertion patterns and uh, is likely responsible for the heterogeneity of gene trees across the different genomes in these three main uh, major groups. And it was at that time also that uh, concatenation has been shown uh, to be inconsistent in presence of uh, really short branch lengths because of deep coalescent uh, event leading to, to gene tree heterogeneity. Um, and this led to a kind of a paradigm shift in uh, phylogenetic uh, analysis as it was uh, uh, detailed by Scott Edwards in, in this talk uh, in the, the precedent uh, symposium on, on phylogenetic uh, methods. So that people I think now uh, are really acknowledging the uh, heterogeneity uh, in uh, gene trees in trying to reconstruct a, a species tree using different kinds of methods such as, such as gene tree species tree methods uh, with uh, the different software, MP, EST, uh, or Astral, for example, or if they use also concatenation, they look at uh, gene site concordance factor, uh, such as implemented in IQ3, for example. And that I will be back to that uh, uh, later. But first, if you want to do some phylogenomics, you need some uh, genomes. And, uh, and in, in this section, I would uh, detail our um, efforts to get. Uh, nice quality genome or high quality genomes from road kill specimens because uh, as a lab interested in uh, uh, biodiversity and non-model species we often uh, have to rely on uh, uh, badly preserved samples such as a road kill but actually road kill can be an, an underexploited resource in, in genomics especially for elusive species such as the those ones we are interested in, in uh, here specifically the hard wolf uh, uh, and the Batia fox that are two carnivores, but uh, which, uh, which shifted to uh, almost fully myrmecophagous uh, diet. And they are actually one of, uh, one of the mostly, most frequently encounters uh, road kill in uh, South African uh, roads. And we, we verified that uh, uh, during some field work while commuting between different uh, natural reserves on the road we uh, encounter many uh, many of the, uh, them and uh, uh, opportunistically sample uh, some fresh roadkill specimens. And back in the lab, uh, that's the kind of specimen uh, from which you get uh, DNA of uh, rather bad quality. So you don't really want to send them that to a sequencing center. Usually the, the DNA quality is not uh, of uh, um, good enough quality for them to sequence. So we try to de do it uh, ourselves uh, and by implementing the Oxford nanopore minion uh, sequencing. And that's really the work of uh, Marika uh, Tilak and Remy Alio, which was uh, doing uh, his PhD with me. Uh, and they, they set up the, the, this kind of sequencing in, a, in our lab and it was pretty successful. And after a few months of uh, uh, methodological optimization, especially uh, on DNA extraction, we managed to, to get some pretty decent run and we finally end up uh, uh, getting 
about three, uh, 30 uh, gigabytes for each uh, of data for each species with uh, decent uh, uh, mean read lengths, about uh, five KB for uh, the hard wolf and uh, a bit less for, for the bat ear fox. And, but of course, so it's about uh, 10X uh, genome coverage for carnivores, these 30 uh, uh, gigabases. And it's not enough to do de novo analysis with uh, reads, long reads that uh, contain uh, more errors than uh, Illumina reads. So we uh, use the hybrid genome assembly approach, combining our long reads with short read, uh, short Illumina reads at uh, 18x coverage. And we use the software uh, Mazurka, which, which was pretty uh, computationally intensive, but uh, lead to really good results, as you can see here in this comparison uh, of our assemblies in terms of number of scaffolds with other uh, placental genome assemblies that are currently available. And uh, you can see with uh, 10,000 and 5,000, with respectively 11,000 and uh, almost 6,000 contings, we are not too bad for carnivore uh, standards. And that's the same for uh, the scaffold N50 with uh, more than uh, one megabase obtained for the hard work, for instance. And in terms of uh, uh, genome completeness, as assessed by the presence of uh, mammalian busco uh, core genes, uh, we can see here on this graph that with more than 90% uh, of complete uh, genes being recovered in our assembly, we are among uh, the best assemblies in the, or the, the really good uh, assemblies, carnivorous assemblies that are available. So next we use these uh, assemblies to perform phylogenetic reconstruction of uh, carnivora. And for this, we use our uh, orthomam database of uh, single copy autologous markers that we have been uh, maintaining in the lab. So it's uh, more than uh, a database of more than uh, 14,000 CDS uh, markers that we can use for reconstructing phylogenetic trees. So combining uh, our genomes with available uh, assemblies and the ones uh, that were already in uh, orthomam, we obtain uh, a data set of more than 4,000 uh, autologous genes for 52 uh, carnivore species, with which we reconstructed the uh, uh, phylogenomic relationships by using uh, both concatenation and gene tree species tree uh, methods. So the concatenation was done with uh, IQ tree, and that's uh, actually the, the, the topology you have presented here with the different uh, uh, a carnivore and family. And actually this, this uh, topology was really congruent uh, with the one obtained using the gene tree species tree astral uh, method, except for one uh, gene, one, uh, one node, sorry. I would uh, come, come to this now. Uh, so if I zoom, so the, basically the, the, the relationships uh, are fully resolved in terms of bootstrap support, except one, uh, one node that you can maybe see here indicated with a 99% uh, bootstrap. But also uh, we, as indicated here by the different uh, symbols, uh, some of the nodes appear to uh, have some underlying gene tree uh, heterogeneity. And if I focus here first uh, on the faded clades, uh, you have here the gene concordance and side concordance factor as estimated by uh, IQ tree and also uh, the percentage of quartet uh, that uh, support the different uh, alternative hypotheses at each node uh, for the astral uh, method. And as you can see, there are uh, four nodes in this uh, faded uh, tree, subtree, uh, that uh, show some uh, signs of gene tree uh, discordance, strong signs of gene tree discordance. And this is not that surprising because uh, uh, Faded genome have been uh, analyzed for a while and in, in uh, great details, and, uh, and uh, several studies have shown uh, previously that uh, uh, gene tree heterogeneity is pervasive uh, in this uh, carnivore and clade, uh, mainly because of uh, ancient uh, uh, hybridization uh, be between both current uh, uh, species and also between ancient uh, uh, um, ancestral lineages probably. 
One uh, note that was uh, maybe more surprising is the discovery of uh, gene tree discordance within uh, Yanids, uh, where uh, the hard wolf is uh, appear as the uh, as the sister group of the other uh, hyena. And we find evidence for discordance, even so the majority tree uh, seems to be this one. There are also some uh, uh, pretty strongly supported, or at, at least alternative that are, that are appearing in the gene trees. And uh, it was in fact confirmed by a, a, a study performed in parallel of uh, ours where they also, by Westbury et al. Where they also sequenced an hard wolf uh, genome and uh, focused on the phylogenetic relationships within uh, Yenids with the other uh, Yenid genomes, and uh, and they confirmed that uh, uh, there was some ancient uh, gene flow between the hard wolf lineage and the ancestral lineage leading to the other uh, Yenids. Uh, same thing in uh, uh, the beer clades, the Ursids where we have evidence for uh, gene tree discordance uh, between the American black beer, the brown beer, and the um, uh, polar beer. And uh, here also, it's not uh, uh, a surprise, but it's, uh, uh, it's good to, to, uh, to see that uh, this kind of uh, indices could point at, at this uh, area of the trees where you can have this discordance is because it has been shown previously that uh, as for felids, the, the uh, earthseed part of the carnivoran tree has been uh, uh, the subject of recurrent uh, uh, hybridization uh, event or ancient uh, introgression event, leading in strong uh, gene tree heterogeneity. And finally, uh, we have evidence for incomplete lineage sorting in uh, the relationship within arctoids. So arctoids is, the, is these clades within California uh, with the relationship between ursids, pinepeds, uh, aquatic uh, carnivores, and uh, what we call mysteloids uh, with mystelids and uh, procyonids. And it has been a, a node that was really difficult uh, to resolve with previous uh, gene concatenation. And uh, here we have strong evidence for uh, one uh, this, this topology being the, the ma majority uh, one, but also the occurrence of uh, alternative topologies. And this fits very well with uh, also this, this, uh, the study of uh, uh, patterns of signs and line insertions in uh, Arctoids in this paper published uh, in 2015 by Dorena et al, uh, where they found again, uh, here, a majority of uh, retroposon insertions in favor of the topology I just showed, grouping pinipeds and uh, mysteloids to the exclusion of uh, ursoids, but they found also some uh, um, um, alternative patterns of retroposon supporting the different, uh, the two other alternatives, strongly suggesting that uh, incomplete lineage sorting uh, occurred in these uh, short uh, internal branches. And finally, I would just uh, finish uh, with some news of the, our, our recurrence genomes for comparative species uh, delineation. And so as we sequence uh, one uh, genome uh, from uh, South Africa, the interesting thing is that in both taxa, uh, subspecies has been, have been uh, described uh, because of uh, disjunct uh, distribution. And uh, so that in both species, you have a, a southern uh, species and an eastern uh, sub, a southern subspecies, sorry, and an eastern subspecies, Proteus cristatus and Septentrionalis, and uh, Otosium megalotis and um, Virgalus. And uh, both our genomes are from South Africa. So we sequence another individual for, uh, in South Africa but also another individual using Illuminate, Illuminate data from uh, the, East, the Eastern population of both uh, species. And using this, uh, we uh, try to uh, estimate the genetic uh, differentiation and genomic at the genome scale by uh, using a whole genome uh, mapping and then uh, genotyping 100 region of 100 KB that we resample uh, uh, 10 times for each uh, uh, population so that we can estimate the genetic differentiation between the uh, South American 
South African, sorry, uh, individual uh, and South American uh, reference genome and the resequence individual in the Eastern populations. And as you can see, the uh, different, we obtain different uh, values for our genetic differentiation, very low uh, in, within uh, South uh, Africa. But uh, when we compare with uh, the other uh, sub, uh, species, we have uh, La, uh, a larger genetic differentiation, higher gen genetic differentiation, and uh, the, this genetic differentiation seems to be higher in the hard wolf than in the bat fox. But uh, without any comparative data, it's difficult to decide uh, on, about the taxonomic status of this uh, species or subspecies. So uh, by following a, a, a proposal by uh, uh, Nicolas Galtier of going for comparative genome-wide differentiation. We uh, gather uh, comparative data available in the, in, the, in the databases for different and distinct species pair within uh, carnivores for which uh, the same kind of sampling uh, was available. One reference genome, one resequence individual from the same uh, population and then another species. And uh, when estimating the same uh, index of genomic differentiation, we can put our uh, uh, estimates into context. And as you can see here, uh, we, if we uh, have this intraspecific intra uh, uh, differentiation values and interspecific uh, differentiation, uh, you can see that uh, the, the two proteolus subspecies seems to uh, be highly differentiated. They are um, actually more differentiated than wolf versus uh, uh, golden uh, jackal and uh, almost as uh, differentiated as the polar and the brown bears. Whereas uh, it's, it's uh, not really the case for uh, the uh, bat ear fox, which seems to be in a, some kind of a gray zone that uh, species might, uh, so that subspecies uh, might be justified. Uh, at least for the uh, hard wolf, this suggests that the two sub, uh, population defined as subspecies might actually be uh, distinct species. And, uh, and there are some kind of morphological uh, evidences uh, uh, with some characters of the fur and also of the correlation that can be further investigated to test that more specifically. Uh, just a conclusion uh, take home. Uh, I showed that uh, rod kill could be used as a suitable source of DNA for mean ion long grid sequencing, uh, provided that you uh, uh, do some nice DNA extraction. Uh, hybrid assembly, uh, combining Illumina reads with uh, mean ion long reads uh, with Mazurka at least, uh, provides some carnivore genomes that are of the very good quality and completeness. And uh, our phylogenomic analysis provides a, a reference phylogeny for, uh, for carnivora and also highlight nodes with underlying gene tree heterogeneity due to uh, incomplete lineage sorting and or uh, ancient integration events. And also uh, our species delineation approaches uh, suggest that Southern and Eastern hard wolf might be considered distinct species. And with that, I would uh, like to acknowledge uh, my co-authors on, the, on the, this paper that was published in eLife, uh, mainly Remy uh, Alio that was uh, doing his PhD on this project and Céline uh, Skornavaka that you will be hearing uh, uh, just after. And, uh, and also the European Research Council for uh, funding. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much for the spectacular presentation, Dr. Lelsuk. And then uh, I have a time for a, for a, for a couple of, of questions. Uh, and then, okay, Manolo Perez. Okay, thank you. Red talc. Um, are there contamination problems with rod kill samples? And is this somewhat related to the stage of the composition? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, so one thing we we uh, we found uh, was that uh, cleaning the the samples uh, from dead cells because it was mainly ear samples that we what we that we used. 
And of course, they, they would have some uh, external contamination with bacteria or uh, that you can find in the environment. So cleaning them with uh, scalpels and so trying to uh, escape from the, the dead cells really uh, improve actually the DNA quality. Uh, and uh, but uh, we did not really look really closely to bacterial contamination, but we didn't find uh, a lot. Uh, Gene Bank has some uh, 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 checking when you submit your assemblies and did not uh, detect any uh, bacterial contamination. And we also did some blood, uh, um, blob to, blob to, we used some blob tools to try to find some uh, contigs that might uh, um, be contaminating, but uh, it was not really the case. Okay, um, then uh, one question also, this type of sign and line that you are you find in these genomes, there are specific for these genomes or you found this type of line, uh, genetic mobile, mobile genetic elements in other mammals? Yes, uh, uh, so lines and signs or retroposons uh, insertion in general has be, uh, have been uh, used a lot, in fact, in, uh, in uh, mammalian systematics. Uh, uh, many labs uh, specified, uh, specialized sorry, in, the, in this kind of analysis. And at the time, they were searching for specific insertion using PCR of some specific elements, so lines and signs and, uh, that are uh, pretty uh, widespread in, in mammalian uh, genomes. So they are not really, uh, uh, so you, basically you can define different uh, lines for different phylogenetic equation. And that's what, uh, what has been done uh, mainly in, this, uh, in these things. So now we have uh, the, the, the genomes and we can uh, do some, the same analysis, but uh, much more uh, uh, thoroughly, and it has been done, for example, in rodents, uh, showing also some uh, evidence for in incomplete lineage sorting based on mosaic retroposon patterns. Okay, uh, Dr. Belsok, we are very, very uh, thank you so much for your spectacular uh, presentation here. We are so happy to to uh, all the information here, and then uh, I we need to move for the next presentation. Uh, to say Lynn is going to back and then it's Burget. Thank you so much. And Perfect. Thank you very much for your invitation. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.